What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tip video for you. So in this video we're going to talk about some more ways to speed up your SketchUp models. And before I get started, uh, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course that I put together to uh, basically give a start to finish instruction on SketchUp. So uh, it's basically the equivalent of taking a two day in person course. I cover everything from the basic tools in SketchUp all the way through modeling for interior design and layout and also an introduction to photorealistic rendering. So if you're looking for some more in-depth instruction on SketchUp, you want to get up and running fast, make sure you check out that link at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So to start off, I want to give credit for this model. Um, this is Mason Verte by Christoph Zabo. I'll link to that um, 3D warehouse model in the notes down below. This is a really well done house model. So thanks a lot to Christoph for this model. All right, so a lot of you know that I did a video on five tips for speeding up your SketchUp model a few years back, and I will link to that in the notes below and also up in the corner up above. And real quick, I wanted to review the techniques from that video because they're very important. So um, the five tips from that video for speeding up your model is number one, turn off your shadows and fog. Um, so shadows and fog make your computer have to do a whole lot of extra processing to actually add in realistic sunlight and that sort of thing. So to turn those off, you can just go to the shadows section of your tray and just click this little button right here for show or hide shadows. Um, tip two is using a fast style. So fast styles are basically styles in SketchUp and you can see when I go in my styles section that some of these have a little clock next to them that say this is a fast modeling style. And basically what that indicates is they're not doing things like rendering extra profiles or things like that in your model. So if you want to speed up your model, select a fast style. Um, you can either use one of the default styles that are in here or you can make one yourself by just adjusting things like your edge settings. So turn things like profiles and extensions off to speed that model up. Um, tip three is uh, putting all your geometry heavy or your heavy geometry objects on their own layer. So in this case with this model, um, the trees and the terrain are a little bit geometry heavy, but they're on their own layer so you can turn them on and off for when you're working and everything's going to run a little bit faster when you do that. So if you put that heavy geometry on its own layer, you can turn that on and off. Tip four is using smart models from the 3D warehouse. So if you're careful about the models that you bring in from the 3D warehouse, you can really uh, make your model speed your uh, overall model speed a lot better. So just keep an eye on the model size and also on the number of polygons that are in the models. And you can see those by clicking on the models in here. So in this case, this SketchUp model for this couch is less than a megabyte in size and it has less than 2000 polygons, which is really good. So on the other hand, some of these other pieces of furniture that are in here, you can see how the file size is up to like 13 megabytes or this one is 36 megabytes. So if you bring in models like this, they're really going to slow down um, your overall model. So just be careful what kind of models you're bringing in from the 3D warehouse. And then the last review tip from that video is if you go up to Window, Model Info, and you go to your statistics, you can click the button for Purge Unused to get rid of the extra stuff in your model that's no longer being used. And you can get rid of a lot of leftover things like, um, like textures and other things like that by using this option. So that's kind of an overview of the stuff that we talked about before. I will link to that video down below. So for my new tips, I want to start off by using smart modeling techniques for objects. And so like for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a pair of bike racks. And so all I'm going to do with these bike racks is I'm just going to extrude a circle along a path. And so you need to be aware of what you're going to be using these objects for. Because what I've done here is you can see this circle is a 12 sided circle. You can see that in the entity info. This circle is a 24 sided circle. And so if I was to come in here and extrude these both along that path using the follow me tool, you're gonna find that they look almost identical, especially if you zoom out. However, if you were to come in here and you were to triple click on it to see the number of entities in here, this object has over 4,000 entities and faces inside of it. And when you click on that, you can see all the different pieces of geometry in here. While this one 
if you do the same thing, you triple click to select all of it, this one only has 2,400 entities. And so from a practicality standpoint, if I was to turn my terrain back on, you can see how both of these objects, when I zoom out, look exactly the same. And quite honestly, you could probably do an even smaller sided circle. So you could probably do like an eight sided circle. So if you're aware that um, like, let's say that none of your views are gonna be any closer than this and you're not gonna get super, super zoomed in on these, then why would you model this with a higher polygon model? So for things that are gonna be in the background, you should really try to model them with as few polygons as possible to keep your model speed up. So in another place where this is evident is if I zoom in on these handrails and I click on the wires that are running back and forth between them, you can see how these have 98 entities inside of them. So they've been created probably with a 12 sided circle. It's a little hard to tell when I'm zooming in, but if you were to model those with something like a six sided circle or something like that, they probably wouldn't look any different because you're never gonna get that far zoomed in. So if you're careful with the way that you model this stuff, then you can really create more lightweight models. So tip two is using beveled edges instead of curved. So let's say for example that you had a pair of boxes like this and you wanted to kind of uh, give some curve to the edges around the top of this. So let's say I had this box and I had a little triangle right here and I used the follow me tool to remove this material. You can see how if I was to do this with a curve over here, I would be creating a lot more geometry. So like if you were to look in this object, this has a curved top and it's made up of 174 entities. Well, well this one over here, which I beveled, if I triple click on that, it's only 31 entities. So you can see how you create a lot more entities in here whenever you um, don't use a beveled edge. So whenever you can try to use more straight bevels in here, then, um, than curved edges like this. And another trick you could use instead is let's say that you wanted more than just this uh, straight line across here. Um, when you draw your arc that you're gonna extrude your bevel with, you could just do it as like a three-sided arc like this. So when you activate the arc tool, you just type in three to set the number of sides in the arc. And then you can use the follow me tool to extrude this around. So while this one, is an arc that's made up of 12 segments. This one was an arc that was made up of three segments. And it's kind of what we talked about before where if I come in here, if I kind of zoom out on this, you can tell those look almost identical even though this one has far less geometry than this one. So just being smart about your modeling practices can really uh, speed up your models. So tip three is something we covered on a little bit already but it's basically triple clicking to find the number of entities in your model or by turning on your hidden geometry. So one of the things you can do to check how much geometry is in your objects, because sometimes it's not easy to tell just by visually glancing at this, is you can either go to view hidden geometry and you can turn that geometry on and then you can see how once you turn that geometry on you can actually see how many entities are in these. And alternatively, if you were to go inside of an object and triple click then that selects not only the faces, but it also selects all the edges and also the hidden geometry. That number will show up in your entity info. So you can use this to figure out how many entities and how much geometry you have in an individual object. So that's a quick, easy way to check basically how much stuff is in your items to see if you need to try to reduce that or anything like that. So tip four is to use lower resolution textures. So there's kind of a trade-off in here, especially if you're gonna be doing rendering. So high resolution textures can be really important to make your renderings look realistic, but on the other hand, they really slow down a SketchUp model. So like for example, this is two different textures that I downloaded from two different places, and one of them is a much higher resolution image than the other um, so but you can't really tell by just zooming out here which one that is so I, I downloaded one from SketchUp Texture Club and the other from wildtextures.com and I will link to the both of those in the notes down below but the one from SketchUp Texture Club is a one megabyte image file so you can zoom in and you can still see detail in here and everything else but the one from wildtextures.com, when I zoom in on that one, it is much higher resolution, but it's also a 40 megabyte image 
file. So when I brought that in, this image that this is using is 40 megabytes. And so, and so if I was to go in this folder and look at these two SketchUp models, they have a rectangle that's exactly the same, and they both have textures applied to them. But in this case, the one with the high resolution texture is a 40 megabyte SketchUp file, while the other one is just a 1.3 megabyte file. So you can see how if you have that high resolution texture in here, you're gonna make your models so big that they're gonna be unusable really quickly. So try to manage and keep track of the size of the files that you're bringing in for your custom textures in SketchUp. All right, so tip five is to model with components. And so when you model with components, your SketchUp models get a lot faster. And so basically what I've done here is I've saved the same cylinder in two different SketchUp files. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a number of copies of these. So the one on the left is just raw geometry. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create 50 copies of that over here using the move tool in copy mode. And then I'm gonna create another 50 copies across here. And so you can see how that's obviously a significant number of cylinders. And you can see how my performance is kind of slowing down over here um, because of that. And one thing I would do in this case is I would go to my default tray, going back to one of my other uh, one of my other tips and I would turn profiles off to make this a faster style um, just because this is going to run a lot slower. But you can see how this is all in here is raw geometry and every one of these objects is made up of all of this hidden geometry that's in here. So I, obviously I created a lot of geometry over here. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing in this other model but I'm going to do it with components. So in this case I would call this cylinder. So I would create a component called cylinder and I would just do the same thing where I create a copy this direction, type in times 50 and hit the enter key. And then I would select this. I would use the move tool in copy mode to do the same thing this way. So times 50, hit the enter key. You can already see how much faster that was. But now you can see that I'm able to fly around a lot faster because SketchUp handles components way better than raw geometry. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna save both of these. So I'm gonna save my cylinders with components and I'm gonna save my cylinders with raw geometry. And you can see how this one takes a significantly more time to save than this one because it's got all of this raw geometry and you can tell that SketchUp is just struggling to handle all of this geometry in here. All right, and so once we've done that, let's go into our folder and double check our file size. So if I go in this folder, you can see I have both of these SketchUp files in here. I have my cylinders with components file and I have my cylinders with raw geometry file. So if you look at them, they look very much the same. They have the same number of cylinders, but then if you look at the file size, the one that's the raw geometry is a 21 megabyte file. The one with components is less than a megabyte. So you can see how it is much, much more efficient to use components wherever possible, especially when you're recreating the same geometry over and over again. That's really gonna speed up your models. And then the last new tip for speeding up your geometry is to use an extension called Cleanup. So Cleanup is an extension you can find, whoops. Cleanup is an extension you can find in the SketchUp extension warehouse. You can just type in Cleanup and then you can click on this first option that pops up. It's an extension from TomTom that has a bunch of built-in tools that clean up and optimize your SketchUp model. So you can just go in and you can just uh, download that and install it. And then all you have to do is just go to your extension section, go to cleanup, and there's this first option on here for clean. And basically what this is gonna do is this is gonna give you the option to purge all of your unused geometry. You can erase out hidden geometry. Um, you can merge identical materials. Um, you can do basically all of the different kind of cleanup things that you would have to do manually. You can do using this extension. So you can repair your split and stray edges. You can get rid of a lot of extra stuff to really optimize your models. Um, I think maybe this erase duplicate faces option is very slow. So you may not want to do that. But um, let's see. I don't know how this is going to turn out. But let's take a look. So right now this model is about a 29 megabyte file. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save it to make sure that all of the changes that I made got incorporated. And then we're gonna go in here and we're gonna run cleanup. 
So I'm just going to leave some of these checked. I'm not going to do erase duplicate faces, but I'm going to do the purge unused. I'm going to use the show statistics, and I'm just going to click the option for cleanup. And what that's going to do is that's going to come in here. And in this case, it didn't really clean up a whole lot. I'd already purged some of the unused in here. And honestly, this model is modeled pretty well. Um, but you can see how it, it at least came in here and reduced some of your edges. So you remove some edges in here. But this will give you some statistics of what it actually did. And so if you're working with a model that has a whole bunch of stuff in the 3D warehouse and a lot of other things, this can really get rid of a lot of extra stuff and speed your model up. So that's where I'm gonna to end today's video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Did you know about some of these? What do you do to speed up your SketchUp models? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.